Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Daiwa Anglo-Japanese Foundation. Uh, my name is Jason James, and I work for the Foundation, and I'm chairing uh, today's session. So, um, our speaker tonight is uh, Keishi Mitsui, and uh, he has been, since 2002, a curator in the Tokyo Metropolitan Museum of Photography, uh, where he's in charge of the 19th century uh, photograph collection. Um, and he also teaches the history of photography at two universities in Japan. Um, he's here in the UK, based at Oxford um, for the time being, um, on a grant from the Japan Association of Art Museums to study how early photographs are conserved uh, in museums and institutions over here. Um, he's also here tonight to share with you his experiences as director of the Likuzen Takata Disaster Document Digitalization Project. Um, which was a project to rescue uh, various photographs which were very badly damaged by the tsunami uh, which hit Japan in March 2011. So without further ado, I'll hand over to you. Thank you for the introduction. I'm very happy to speak here today. As you know, about three years ago, a huge earthquake struck northern Japan. It was the worst tsunami in more than 100 years. Today, I'm going to talk about a project to rescue archive photographs. But before I do, I'd like to show you a brief video made last year by NHK. NHK is the BBC of Japan. It's six minutes, but it tells the story well and shows how museums were affected. Anyway, it's better than listening to my in poor English. One minute, please. People in northeastern Japan have spent nearly two years getting over what they lost and getting back on their feet. Next Monday marks their second anniversary of the earthquake, tsunami and nuclear accident. The disaster killed nearly 16,000 people. About 2,700 others are still listed as missing. People across the northeast are moving forward on a path to recovery. The work to rebuild their homes, their communities and their lives will be spending the lead up to March 11th looking at how far they've come and the challenges that still lie ahead. And today we'll examine the impact of the catastrophe on Japan's cultural heritage. Education ministry officials say about 3,400 cultural and educational facilities were damaged, including schools, libraries and museums. The earthquake brought down the walls and ceilings of many traditional buildings like this early 19th century school. The tsunami flooded tons of artifacts, paintings and ancient documents were soaked in seawater. Broken earthenware had to be disposed of, joining piles of rubble and other debris. The scale of the destruction was unprecedented, but soon expert hands were at work, <coughs> piecing things back together, trying to salvage what they could. NHK World's Tomoko Kamata reports from Iwate Prefecture. Once a prized collection, now, pieces in a puzzle. This wing goes here. A curator is restoring one of the damaged archives. It's a butterfly collection. The tsunami washed their wings away. Hundreds of thousands of animal and plant specimens. Documents, too. All engulfed in the tsunami. It's painstaking work. Mahoro Suzuki is a curator at Iwate Prefectural Museum. She's in charge of saving one of Japan's oldest museum collections. 
Thanks to these specimens collected for the museum by generations of researchers, we can understand how this region has changed. The collections come from Rikuzen Takata. Two museums and the library in the city were destroyed by the tsunami. All six employees in the city museum, with expert knowledge, died. Nobody knew how to clean specimens soaked in muddy seawater. The quantity and variety of specimens is vast. Desperate for help, Suzuki sent out emails to museums and universities around Japan. 30 groups volunteered their support. Restoring 65,000 prints and transparencies was one of the most difficult tasks. Keishi Mitsui is a curator of old photographs at the Tokyo Museum. He thought his know-how could help save the collection. Originally, all I thought I'd have to do was to wash them, but the damage is far worse than I'd imagined. The seawater damaged the photographic fixer. Sewage and chemicals from nearby factories compounded the damage. About 60 volunteers are working on the project four days a week. They meticulously blow off the dust. No matter how bad the damage, everything is kept, as it could be of interest to researchers in the future. We remove the sand so slowly. Some of the images they salvage are very interesting. This photo of a volcano in Niwate was taken over 100 years ago. This lion dance is a performance that is unique to the city. Each photograph sheds light on life before the tsunami. Everything has to be handled with great care. Mitsui's group creates a digital record of every exhibit, front and back. It's important to preserve the notes written by past curators on the specimens. The digital image is then sent back along with the original and any other data they found with each piece. These are the collections that have come back to Iwate Prefecture. Curators across Japan, like Mitsui, worked to restore the pieces. But the work is far from over. Suzuki and her colleagues are still trying to identify each of the animals, plants, and pictures. Many people have helped us. I'd like to repay those efforts by creating a digital archive that more people can see. <coughs> Many more years will be needed before all the collections have been examined and archived. But the researchers say they won't stop their efforts to solve this puzzle, one small piece at a time. Tomoko Kamata, NHK World, Iwate. All photographs we worked on come from Rikuzen Takata. This is a tsunami at Rikuzen Takata. And this is a museum directory that before and after. Inside was table mass. There was mud and sea water on everything. Notice the album. This is the type of material that we tried to save. We received 
many types of photographic materials, not just albums. First, we saw that the material and gave them ID numbers. Albums and boxes of slide boxes of slide were treated as one item. Then we tried to stabilize the materials. We scanned or took digital photos and uploaded everything to a cloud-based system. This is an example of my album, uh, an album as we received it. The notes were made in Tohoku. We use a cloud-based system always used, already used by many museums in Japan. Users can customize the information fields themselves. After materials were dry, we photographed them to the record the condition upon arrival. There were three reasons for this. One, to put an image into the system to go with each number. Next, to have a record of the condition upon arrival. Finally, to have a base record for comparison, for example, to compare after cleaning. Here workers are recording the condition before cleaning. To give you an example, let's look at what we did for albums. First, we took a picture of the front cover. Then, we photographed each page. Look at the damage. We also photographed back cover even if there appeared to be no information. Also the spine. Next, we remove mud and sand using dust brushes and natural hair brushes. We did not work on the emergent, just around it. We cleaned the front and back of each photograph using a brush. If there was any kind of attachment, such a memo, we cleaned the two albums we took apart. If a, <coughs> I'm sorry. If a print was struck to its sheet, we cut off the entire sheet with the print or print attached. After cleaning, we put prints in boxes. Then we put the boxes into the refrigerators, refrigerator at 10 degrees. For the negatives and contact prints, we dried, cleaned, and put them into the sleeves, new sleeves. For slides, after cleaning, if the condition of the mount was particularly bad and there was no text on the mount, we put them in new mounts. Then the slide was stored 
in new boxes. That's it. In many cases, the glass plates were stuck together, stuck together, and need to be separated. Eventually, I found a good tool. Very thin spatula like this. Spatula using used in making ceramics. I would insert one spatula between the plates, the being careful of the immersion to create a space. Then I would insert another spatula to make a space bigger. Usually it took three spatulas before, uh, before the plate would be would, would come set apart would come apart. Then the plates were separated. We put them the natural paper and stored them in box. That's it. If if plate was broken, we cut out a board in the space of the piece pieces and insert the pieces. The broken plates were stored flat. We use a digital camera to photograph print, photograph prints. We set up several stations so we could work faster. Each station was the same so each record and recorded you under the same conditions. We saved each photograph two files as raw data and as JPEG files at 300 dpi, which are easy to handle. <coughs> we cut a color chart like this. We also insert ID numbers. If there was any notation or memo that was photographed with the object. This print is so damaged there is nothing to see, but the memo in the box tells us when and where it was taken. Crossplate. Crossplate were scanned on a flat bed scanner with an overhead light. The scan image. Using this scan image, it's possible to create a positive image like this. Here is uh, some detail about how we enter data. This was the field for the triage information. Here we record as such step was done. There were thumbnails of all pages of an album. This is a close up of one page. All our works were done by volunteers. After the tsunami, people really, really wanted to help. So rescuing, uh, recruiting was not different, difficult, not difficult. But the work was tedious, so it was important to take care of our volunteers.
we explained about the materials and the photographic processes so it would be learning experience. We also try to make it fun. For example, we bought sad hat for the volunteers who helping during Christmas week. That was just brief introduction, but I hope it got you thinking about your own archives or something and how to protect them. This can happen anywhere and anytime. It's important to be prepared. Thank you for hearing.